Piece of smoke king. I don't know about that. Yeah, you are. I, uh, I gotta say, yeah. everything you cook is badass. I think I just get lucky then. Yeah, oh, bullshit. And I, and, I, and I try different shit. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm Big Country. A lot of y'all been asking about what kind of smokers I got, so I figured I'd take a little bit of time on my day here. We've been busy, and I'm gonna kind of go over the smokers that I have, the smokers that I've ran. Um, I've had a lot of different various of smokers over the years. Um, I've even built a couple of myself, um, but I've been running these Yoder smokers. Um, I, ha I, have, I have Yoder smokers, I have Meyer mixing smokers. Um, those are really the only two commercial smokers that I, that I have had and that I've run. Um, I know a buddy of mine, Mike Waycaser, his company, they had found a Shirley smoker, which is a really good smoker too. I've never ran one, but I've heard that's a really good smoker too. Um, the, the biggest thing on smokers is what's hard to, to, what people don't understand is when you're smoking on, is that if they got hot spots in them, that's the problem with smokers. So if a smoker doesn't run efficiently, and doesn't create those hot spots, it's a good smoker. So if, you, if it's efficient on fuel, it's efficient on wood, and doesn't have the hot spots, then it's a good smoker. Some of them have hot spots, and it's just, it's inevitable, you can't get around it. You just have to know where your hot spots are, so when you cook, you know how to cook your meat. So let's just say, for instance, if you know this smoker right here, you got this chamber, it's X amount 30, you got 32 inches, I think it is. So if this thing has a hot spot here, and you place, you place the bigger part of the meat. Let's just say the smoker's got a hot spot. We need to clean this. Yeah. Let's say the smoker's got a hot spot right here and you're co cooking the th thicker part of your meat or whatever. So you would start with wherever your hot spot is. That's where you want your heaviest part of your meat at. But at some point, if it's about the same size as that meat, you're going to have to turn that thing halfway through the smoke. If Why? you don't, if you don't, it's gonna overcook your meat where your hot spots are at. So that's why a lot of people, whenever your meat, if they cook, and if the meat's too done on one side and is the other, it's because there's a hot spot in their grill they don't know about. It. The only way you can really know that is to put a thermo pin or a temperature thermometer in the grill and put it in various places and you'll know what temperature it runs. Because basically on these pellet smokers, this guy here, this is a YS640. It feeds the pellets through here and uh, then it feeds it through the hopper which I don't want to get all greasy, but there's a plate that comes out right here and there's a burner right there. So that burner is producing heat all the way across the bottom of the shield, but it could be hotter over here, could be hotter over here. These Yoder smokers run pretty even. This right here, this it'll run around 300, this one will run probably 310. So there's only 10 degrees. 10 degrees ain't nothing. If you got a smoker that's 50 degrees or 100 degrees apart, that's something you have to keep an eye on. Does every smoker have a hot spot or no? Um, yeah, I would say, yeah, they probably do. Are they the same hot spots? And no, nah, they're different in different areas. It just depends on how it dissipates its heat. These guys here have a, a, t a 3 16 chamber in them. So the metal's 3 16 on these guys, which I would recommend on any smoker, nothing less than 3 16 But if you get the ones that's got a quarter inch cook chamber, like that one I bought Miss Kim, or I built Miss Kim, that thing has a quarter inch cook chamber. Um, it has, on the heat plate on the bottom, it's it's, half inch yeah so i built her bottom where the heat chamber comes through from here all her bottom piece uh that transfers the heat up through the top that's all half inch the chamber itself up here is all quarter inch so her grill is definitely really efficient um i've cooked a lot of meat on that grill before um, before she took it and uh i you know i cook baked potatoes i cook ribs i cook steaks i mean it did very very well and it retained heat so the 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 thicker the, the metal is, the better your grill retains heat. A lot of people that are up north where it's cold at, sometimes they actually have to put a thermal blanket over these grills because it's, you know, if you're cooking outside and it's 20 degrees out, well, it's all around this grill, so it knocks the temperature down. So some of them have to put a thermal blanket on. But it, like I said, if you got a good quality grill, you're gonna pay a lot for it. It's gonna be heavy, it's gonna be thick metal, and it's gonna be very fuel efficient, and it's gonna retain heat very well. That's why you have to pay good money for a good grill. What's think, this one cost? Uh, this grill right here is around 20. It's, I think I saw it the other day. It's like, this has got a competition card on the bottom. So it's wheels, you can run it across the ground or whatever. And this is the grill we actually run around our race rig with. We actually, Brian just got done knocking some of the rust off and that'll happen 
I'll get to the minute of the cost, but the rust will happen from the grease. The grease is what does that. They now make a drip tray that goes on front of this thing that will prevent that. But every now and then, you just got to knock that rust off. It's painted again. This grill right here is $28.99. That's new? Yeah. $28.99. Then, you know, you accessorize them. You know, you got to pay for the trays. You pay for every little thing you put on a grill. So this grill right here is probably around $3,500. But in all fairness, I think we've had this grill for like three years. I can't even tell you how much we have cooked on this grill. Like this grill has fed a lot of people. And he's wanting to get rid of it now. Uh, I don't know why. Well, just, just for a- more... Didn't you put this on there? What? No, no, it comes on this. I mean, I put one on my, that one for Kim. But anyway, it's just a weight to help me lift this heavy lid. The problem is if you look at this, there's just not a lot of cooking capacity. And I don't like to cook directly close to the heat. So I always like to cook up away from an indirect heat. It's blocked off. It's a slower cook, slower process. It allows the heat, it don't burn. The good thing about a smoker should always be, you put your meat in there and let it be, uh, and, and, and it don't burn the meat. That's the best thing about a smoker. A smoker doesn't burn, like really any idiot can cook on a smoker. It's, you should be able, anybody should be able to cook on a smoker. But, and uh, what? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, anybody can cook on a smoker. That's the good thing about a smoker. You know, that's another thing. So. So some people run them low and slow. I don't, I run mine hot and fast. I don't like a lot of smoke in my meat. If you run them at 200, 225 or something like that, they're gonna smoke a lot. It doesn't matter if it's a pellet smoker, wood smoker, whatever it is, the higher the heat, the cleaner the fuel is. So it, the cleaner it burns. So I try to run all my shit 300, 325. I, I'll put a little smoke infused in them at first, but then after that I crank them up and I just run them fast. I don't know, I don't know if the meat tastes better on the whole low and slow. I mean, there's like fucking a hundred different ways you can do it. I just know the way I do it and whatever. It tastes good to me, so I roll with it. But anyways, yeah, this guy right here is around 2,900 bucks and then you can accessorize it. It takes out to about 3,500, but it's well worth it. As long as you take care of it, you're gonna have this grill for a long time. I had another one just like this, but it didn't have the competition card on it. And that thing's like 2,400 bucks. I, mean, I cooked on that at the house there for, you know, several few years. And I ended up giving that one to Mike because I wasn't cooking on it no more because I just bought a bigger smoker, which we'll go up there. We'll go to the back of the house and I'll show you the smoker I bought. Um, it's actually the one that I'm thinking about putting in the race rig, putting this one back at the house. So I have more cooking capacity because sometimes, you know, we cook there. You can, like this guy here, you can get three racks of ribs on top of that and then you're done. Now it's gonna, it's gonna be tied up for three hours. Three racks of ribs won't feed a lot of people. You know, I want something I can put eight or 10 racks of ribs on and then you can feed, you know, 20, 30 people. We, we eat better at the racetrack than we eat anywhere. I eat better at the racetrack than I eat anywhere. Well, let's, let's, go, to, the let's back. go to the back of the house. I'll show you the other smokers I got back there. <laughs> So look here, this is a smoker that I just recently bought. I've only smoked on this smoker probably a handful of times, maybe a half a dozen times I bought this smoker used from a guy. He had only used it two or three times and he, he sold it, he didn't want it. This is actually a charcoal smoker. So, which I think is kind of cool too. I cook, I've cooked a lot, you know, back in the day, you just have a little charcoal, charcoal grill and you cook on a charcoal grill. The good thing about this smoker here is you can raise the, the heat, uh, the heat exchanger where your coals are set in so you can raise that thing up and down get it close to your meat um and this is actually a square top smoker so you can put a lot of capacity of meat on this guy this is basically a 24 by 48 or a 48 by 24 so it's got this first little door you can see i cooked on it the other night it's got this first little door here that you open up and then it's got a second door that you can open it up so you get to the whole grill now over here to the side i got grill grates in here those grates set in there what i cooked on the other day is this uh this it's like a blackstone but that that grill right there point right here you see this right here i want to see how that goes. oh yeah it works good so right here i cooked on this which they call it a blackstone griddle i don't know what it is but yoder made one for this so i had a fire right here and i put it right on here and I actually fried up some hamburger meat now and we made tacos off this grill the other night what i did was we cooked up the meat me and the mills we cooked up all the meat, cooked up all the peppers, got them ready on, on that flat top. And then we made the tacos and I had that smoker over there already running, which that's a YS 1500. That's the one I just, I got before I went to Australia. I think I got that. 
Um, that's the one you want to put in the trailer? Yeah. yeah Dude, look how big that thing is. No, it's not that much. It's only like a couple feet bigger. This, but look at the cooking posse. This joker got some room. So how many racks of ribs can you put on that one? Oh, I can put, you know, you can put eight up top and at least three or four down here on this side. You can put a lot of ribs. Hey, let me call you right back. All right. So anyways, let's finish over here. So anyways, a little charcoal smoker. What's gonna be good for this smoker right here is, is you can put charcoal on there and then I put lump charcoal, uh, lump charcoal uh, wood on it. So I use biscuit charcoals and lump charcoal on it. But this is good for cooking hamburgers, hot dogs, uh, pork chops. Hell, you can even cook chicken on it. You cook some yard bird on it or cook steaks on it. This thing will cook really good steaks. So, and this is like to cook steaks and stuff like that. Sometimes the smoker is just a little too much for that type of meat. And you, if you want something that can sear something and, and, and get it hot fast and, and cook it fast, that's this. Or you put that stuff on a gas grill. So that's kind of why I got this one. And because I like smokers. What's this one cost? That's a, that smoker there is a little over five thousand. But I bought it used. I got a really good deal on it. Um, and because I had never had a charcoal smoker, I don't know that I would go spend five grand on it. But because I bought it used and I got a good deal, I was okay with it. But I do like it now. Um, like I said, it's got a lot of cooking capacity, man. You can put chicken wings. I cooked three packs of chicken wings on that thing the other day and had plenty of room, more left over. I mean, that's a really good little grill, man. I like it. Again, 3 16th chamber, it holds the heat. When I shut it down the other day, this thing ran up to 600 degrees. So man, you could sear, there's gonna be a time I'm gonna go ahead and get it ready. I'm gonna sear some steaks on that grill. 600 degrees, man, you can sear steaks, man. Have a, you can have a good one inch thick steak on there in about six minutes and that thing's done. Um, this grill here is a YS 1500. So it's a step bigger than the 640. Um, and it's on a competition cart too. So like you can take it out in the dirt or whatever. Um, this one here, the difference between that one, it has the uh, newer Wi-Fi on it, Bluetooth Wi-Fi. So you can actually control the temperature and look at your meat pros, meat temperatures with your phone. I think that's all fine and great. I'll probably never use that aspect of it because I know every meat that I cook. I know what temperature I cook it at. I know how long it takes to cook it at, if I'm gonna wrap it or if I'm gonna spritz it with uh, with uh, apple cider vinegar and, and apple juice. I just know how to cook whatever I'm cooking. So I probably won't never use, you know, I set my temperature, let it roll. Uh, you know, if it's, uh, it, it, if you're looking, that's the old saying with a smoker is if you're looking, you ain't cooking. So at the end of the day, you kind of got to learn and it takes time and it took me time too, but it, you got to know what you're cooking and what the temperatures need to be and how long it takes to run it. Because the best thing you can do with this guy is shut this lid and not open it. Now, when it comes time, if I'm cooking a pork butt or if I'm cooking a brisket, cooking ribs, whatever, there's a time where you're going to want to spritz it. So you just have to kind of know how long into your cook and where that's at because you want your meat to set a certain type of bark. The bark is what you're looking for on any kind of meat before you wrap it. And sometimes I don't even wrap my meat either. Sometimes, that doesn't even sound right, does it? Sometimes I don't even wrap my meat, but I cook it all the way through and let it run. So I don't know, man, there's there's so many ways you can cook your stuff, but I think it tastes good no matter how you cook it. You know, as long as it's seasoned right, I, that's the thing. Season is what can really get you messed up when you're cooking. Some people will get, you know, three or four or five different seasonings and put on, but what you gotta watch is all those seasons have salt. So if you keep adding all that, before you know, when you get ready to eat it, that shit's so goddamn salty, you can't even eat it. Tony got me fucked up like that in a race one time. We ate that shit and it was, it, dude, I was choking on salt, so. We got Tony, go good yeah, down we got there. Tony, Tony cook now. Now this one over here, we'll move on from this one. Hold up. Okay, go ahead. What's this one cost? So this grill's about 50, the one over there, step down, what you said is about yeah, this 3, one right here is about 5,400. You know, with with this plate, a couple little, you know, a cover, little things on. This is about 5,400 bucks right here. We in the yeah. wrong business. Yeah, well, I mean, again, 3 16 chamber, uh, you know, you just got to get. Now, this, so so that's that's the YS 1500. Now we're going to move over here. This is a, this is a uh, MM Myron Mixon uh 48 h2o so this thing here actually has water you'd have to look at it over here so this this right here is a you float have to valve. Hook the hose to it yeah you hook a hose to a float valve and it fills a water baffle on the bottom when it fills that water up and it gets to the float which the water is be right here inside this port right here 
it'll stop and it'll float out. So what that thing does, the fire, once you stoke the fire, which is in here, and that's another thing, this, this smoker's all insulated. So this is like the real deal, the bad, bad mamma jamma, but it's insulated, quarter inch firebox, quarter inch cooking chamber, everything's quarter inch, doors are plated. I think the doors are even bigger than that quarter inch. But anyways, they're probably gonna sound like they're because it ain't been open. I use this thing once a year. I cook on, well, maybe twice, Thanksgiving and Christmas. I usually put big turkeys in here. Anything that's big and takes a long cook, I cook it on uh, pecan wood or cherry wood or apple wood or something like that. So, now you can look in the bottom there and kind of see. It's got a little bit of surface for us, but it ain't no big deal. You wipe that out. But that all gets filled with water. So that water fills up to right about there. So this thing boils water, it steams. So when you got your meat in there, it's steaming the meat. And what it does, it sends moisture up through the meat. So you can look how thick that guy is. But, uh, so yeah, this grill right here is a bad bitch. Like you can put a lot of meat on this grill. You know, I'll put me, I'll put me, I've had four birds up here, a couple hams, I mean, whatever, man. You put a lot of meat on this grill. Yeah. They, they make them a lot bigger than this. Hell, they got a 72 inch wide one. They got, they got some bad ones. But uh, this smoker right here is, pr is probably the bad, the, the bad boy. The only problem is you gotta sit there with wood and you gotta feed it. This thing right here, about every 20 minutes, you're gonna have to feed a, a, um, a stick of wood to it. So you gotta keep it running consistent. Once you get that guy up to 300, 350, wherever you're running it, you gotta keep feeding that thing with fuel. <coughs> but, I've actually had a couple people wants to buy this grill from me, um, but I don't know, man. Honestly, I waited so long to get a good grill like this, and I've cooked so much good food on this. I'm probably just going to let that thing rot away back here and use it once or twice a year when I use it because I just can't, I can't, I can't come to agreements of, of letting this grill go. So what's this one cost? Um, you know, today's time, this grill's three or four years old but today's time i'm gonna say it's about 6500 maybe seven, seven grand. grand yeah this bitch is heavy though man like you're not gonna run you ain't rolling this one in the no, dirt man this bitch even to roll this thing man this thing's probably 900 pounds every bit of 900 pounds maybe maybe a little more than that maybe a thousand i mean this bad boy right here it, it's a lot it's got dampeners up top here that's how you control your heat you open that up let the exhaust come out that joker will jack some heat up you want to smoke it down and choke it down that's how you choke them down, close them up. Uh, it's got a, in the back here, it's got a slide. This is what opens the fire up, lets it breathe, get air through there. You got air chamber on the other side. So you can control that heat. Like this guy right here will run, man. Once it's running up 300, 350, it'll maintain it. Like You just gotta keep feeding the wood. Yeah, about every 20 minutes, 25 minutes, feed it a quart of wood, keep your fire consistent. And man, that thing will be boiling. Whatever's inside there, it's cooking. Another thing is, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. You gotta shut that door and leave it closed. If you wanna cook a brisket on this thing, just get you some beers, pop you up a chair, and wait about 12 hours. But I'll be honest with you, I, I can run them in about eight hours. I get them done in about eight hours, because I ain't doing that. There's some people that cook that shit for 15 hours. The hell with that. I'm gonna get that done, boy, done in about eight hours. So oh, yeah. that's the gist of the smokers that I have. Uh, if you look at this wood over here, this is pecan wood over here. That's cherry wood over there. I've got some, uh, I've got some hickory wood somewhere. I don't know what I did with mom, that. Mom threw that out. Yeah, yeah, she did. I remember that. But that hickory wood, man, that's such a hard wood. I don't really like the hickory wood. I like more of a, an orange wood, like orange trees. Uh, apple wood. Apple. That's really good wood. I had Danny bring me some from uh, Michigan. Um, the cherry wood, pecan wood. That's Florida wood. Uh, but that that hickory wood, that's like. I don't know, that's something you gotta cook like, like a maybe a wild game, like boar or something. It, it's got such a hard taste to it. So I don't, I don't really care for the cherry wood. I mean the, uh, the hickory wood. But you know, a lot of guys don't like the pellet smokers. I happen to actually like them a lot because they are for the lazy guys. You ain't gotta sit there and keep burning them. You ain't got time. You know, you see what happens. I come out in the morning and if I know I'm gonna throw some ribs on, so I'll run them for about three hours, but I basically get this thing, set it, go, put them on, and walk away. I'll come see it at after the first hour of the cook, then I'll come see it the second hour of the cook, and I'll come the third hour and pull them off. So I'm working, though, and letting the food run. 
So that's the thing about a pellet smoker. You cannot do that with a stick burner. A stick burner, you're basically gonna sit there all day and maintain that thing. That's the difference. That's, that is why I like the pellet smoker. And to be honest with you, I really can't tell the taste difference. Everybody says, oh, you know, you get them got, if it's a stick burner, you know, if it ain't a stick burner, you give a cook. They're so full of shit, man. I cook on a goddamn charcoal smoker. I got a green egg at the back of my house that I cook on. Hell, it all tastes the same. I can cook the shit on this fucking gas grill and it still tastes about the same to me. I got a gas grill sometimes. I can throw shit on that thing right there and it tastes the same. I mean, I guess you see, I, I'm just not, I, I don't believe in all that bullshit they say. I got a green egg. I don't know if you can see that up here. Come check out my green egg. I, I'll, well, I will tell you this. I don't know. Uh, if, there has to be a difference because the best brisket that I ever cooked is definitely on the green egg, without a doubt. The green egg cooks, even it cooks it better in my Myron biscuit. biscuit. The only reason why I can say it is there's absolutely no hot spots in this because this is like an oven. It's a porcelain oven and the fire's right underneath it. And of course, I'll put a deflector plate in there. I don't know where it's at now, but I've got a plate in there. You ain't cooked on that thing in a while. Nah, dude, this, it'll have mildew in here. I haven't cooked on this thing probably six, eight months. So before you eat on that thing, you gotta <laughs> clean all that off because that's from the grease, it gets mildew. See this deflector plate right here? So that keeps, that's so that no direct heat gets put on that guy. So all the heat will be in there, and that's another reason, you can't burn it. No matter what you do, you can't burn this guy. But I've cooked some serious, dude, I've cooked a turkey on this guy. I, it'll run up 600 degrees, I'll see your steaks on it. I mean, these green eggs, these are bad. And this thing right here is, so I put this thing in here in 2007. So it's like friggin' what, 16 years old? 15, 16 years old, this thing is. This grill right here is 15, 16 year old. I got another one over here. She's kind of old and outdated. I've been threatening to put one in. If you see the black, my wife tries to cook, but she doesn't know how to cook on a grill and she catches shit on fire. So, yeah. Hell yeah. We used to have the old beer tap out here. This is 15, 16 years ago, back when we'd be cooking up a lot and drinking some good tap beer, but I haven't ran that thing in a long time either. Hell yeah. But anyways, that's about all I got, man. That's the difference in the grills that I have. Uh, I do cook on them all, like even the green egg, man. Every now and then I'll fire that guy up. I'll clean her all up, fire up, because that green egg puts out some good meat. And it, and it does cook the best brisket, brisket I've ever eaten, to be honest with you. So, but that's the difference in grills. I cook on them all. Um, I like them all, and I like to cook.